What is going on, roofing contractors? Welcome to another episode of The Roofer's Den. I could not be more excited to have a guest today because this individual needs no introduction. If you have spent any more than a day in roofing, especially in the state of Florida, you know Aggie, and I am so happy that she's able to be here with me today from Hippo Roofing. So much I want to pick her brain about. What's going on, Aggie? Hi, guys. Hi, Patrick. Hey. So, like I said, Aggie, you have been in the industry. You have seen it all. Okay, I want to start with some questions here because I think there's just so much value in what you bring out there. Um, let's first of all talk about Hippo Roofing. You guys have taken over Brevard County. Tell me how that feels to be the number one roofer in Brevard. I think you guys just won a pretty big award. Is that correct? We won a few. Uh, Hippo Roofing has been around since 2004. It's a family owned company. And the Stillwells have been here since the early 2000s from the Midwest. And uh, Hippo Roofing has a long history of being in construction and then finally in roofing. So we've perfected our niche of roofing because as you guys know, there's tons of roofers, but everyone brings something to the table. We bring a permanent roofing solution. And that's how we dominate with that, um, our marketing. Well, you guys don't just dominate with your marketing, which I know you do a great job of, but you guys dominate with your process as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's about putting, you know, in the end of the day, it's about putting on a great roof, which exactly. I've seen time and time you guys do again. Can you tell me a little bit about what makes the roof from Hippo different? Because you guys are obviously doing something that nobody else is doing. You, you're winning multiple awards. You're taking over whatever, wherever you go. Can you tell me a little bit about why should a homeowner choose a Hippo roof over some other contractor? That's a great question. And um, what's most important is at the end of the day, the consumer uh, getting what they need from the contractor. So even though uh, the perception is all roofing contractors do the same work, we don't. It's uh, unfortunately some uh, consumers are buying roofing kind of like buying cars. What's most important is finding the contractor that you need. So when someone, for example, pip, pips, um, picks Hippo. So we offer a permanent roofing solution. So with every single build that we do, whether it be our classic shingle or our, our premium shingle, our metal products, our super roof products, they are all built above code. They're built to Miami-Dade standards and they're built to last. So um, with that being said, when people end up using us with an insurance policy or, or claim, it's a blessing. So they're getting a fantastic roof for the deductible. So tell me a little bit about that because you guys are on the coast over there in Brevard. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, their home office is over in Melbourne, mm -hmm. which happens to be in the east coast of Florida. Um, you talk about building codes, Aggie. Can you can you talk a little bit more about that? Because there are, there, there's somebody watching in Oklahoma. There's somebody watching in Missouri. Um, mm -hmm. Just the importance of building a roof to stand the test of time. You guys do that. You do it with metal roofs. You do it with shingle. You do it with tile. You do it all the way across the board. It gives you a great reputation at Hippo Roofing. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit about what advice would you give to that person who's who's starting a company in the Midwest or in North Florida or wherever they are to 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 build the best roof possible? What kind of advice would you give to them? That's a great question. So it all starts with where are you positioned and what kind of uh, wind or um, weather velocity are you in? So, for example, in Brevard County, we're in a high wind velocity zone. So there are certain specifications and each county also have their specifications to build certain roofs. Where um, being on the barrier islands or the beach side, those roofs have um, more standards or, or, uh, or uh, more regulations when it comes to being built than, for example, inland when it's Melbourne or um, Palm Bay. So with that being said, we like to build the, the same roof all across the board a high wind velocity, a Miami-Dade County approved metal. So we're putting higher grade materials all the way down from the peel and stick. And we all know that uh, as far as underlayments and uh, materials, you can buy um, the cheapest and go from there. But when, it, when that happens, you are doing a disservice to the customer. And unfortunately, uh, when it comes to real estate, I, I see too many people buy beautiful Mercedes in their um, in their driveways, but they put a Pinto on their roof. So uh, what's most important, everything done from the underlayment to the uh, stainless steel fasteners to the shingles, which are uh, 220 pounds per square, the metal, their first choice steel that we buy. Uh, there's uh, certain metal companies that um, are around. There's only uh, one type of metal that we buy 
from our manufacturer that makes our 50 year product superior. So I think that starts, let's start with the sales process for Hippo that makes you guys so different and so unique. And I, I think you just, what you just said right there is, is going to is basically just going to yeah. prelude to what I'm going to tell you is that, you know, roofs, you know, yeah. there's too many sales reps out there that don't, they've never put on a roof. They have no idea what an underlayment is. They have no idea what goes on and into a roof. Not your guys at Hippo Roofing. Is that correct? Correct. So everyone that works for Hippo is on the payroll, which means we don't subcontract. Yeah. And going back to your original question, if you're from the Midwest and you're first signing your roofing company, it's so important to know, uh, go get to know the permitting department, go get to know the state and what the requirements are and go from the ground up because that's what Hippo did. They started small and they learned their way up to make a superior roof. It took them years to perfect their system. And um, also with roofing companies, if you sustain a business longer than five years, you've made it. The next obstacle is 10 years. Because as time goes on, folks, um, we do warranty our roofs. And if you put on a roof and you think you're never going to warranty it or maintenance that you are incorrect, uh, these roofs go through with so much turmoil with weather, heat, rain, other parts of the country, um, snow and sleet. Um, they have to be maintenance. They have to be touched and checked. So that's what we do with a yearly inspection. So it's something that we do to make sure that our product that is supposed to sustain 50 years will sustain that. Well, and this, you know, Aggie, you don't just personally have one of the best reputations there is in the industry in Florida, but so does your company. So can you speak a little bit to a person out there? Let's take our Midwest example. That guy who is just starting his roofing company right now. What advice would you give to that individual who's just getting started in the industry? Um, would you talk to him about marketing? Would you talk to him about sales? Would you talk to him about production? Can you tell him from, from your perspective, what great piece of advice you could give to, uh, to that guy just getting started. Everything what you just said uh, will not happen unless you have a process. If you don't have a process to make that flow, then marketing and sales uh, won't have a, a system and it'll, it'll just kind of be kind of thrown around. When you have a process and you have an assembly line of your process for things to flow, everything from the start of the sale to the paperwork, to the um, permitting, to the production, and then the after install, and then obviously later warranty uh, is a whole um, production, a, a whole uh, process that needs to be implemented first. And that all will also entail your pricing and how and your overhead that all will work together. So I know that new roofing companies open up and they kind of go by, well, if that guy's charging that much a square, I'll do the same. Mm -hmm. If that's the case and you're over you undercharge yourself, then you will not sustain a business for long. Um, the, so. the reason why so many roofing companies fail is they just fail to get the process down right. Because I, I feel like I see a roofing company every every other day that opens and closes. They do a few roofs and then they close. You think it's the process that really that really destroys a lot of these small mom and pops? Maybe not just the process. I mean, it's also the the team behind the scenes. If their their books aren't in line, their management isn't on board. I mean, I, I've gosh, I've seen a couple of these. Um, competitors that used to, you know, bash us now gone. I mean, uh, usually the ones that um, that have that kind of bad juju that they put out there are the ones that are not just not around anymore or won't be. This is such a great lesson for roofing contractors out there. Aggie is on top of her game. She has been since I've known her for years, but you will never see her or hear her or her company talk bad about a competitor. It does not happen. And no, I've been friends with most of our roofing companies. Um, if there's something that we can't do or won't do or a certain job, I mean, I have a, um, a little pipeline of my local, um, I don't even call them better, they're, they're roofing companies that we, um, they're friends and we refer them to each other. So, And that is so key because I see roofing contractors out there who make that mistake. And I know you've met them, Maggie. We've gone to some of the same networking yeah. events and they talk poorly about one company or they talk poorly about another. <laughs> It only becomes a reflection of them as a company when you talk bad about other contractors in the industry. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah, it, it just it seems to be a pandemic in the in the roofing industry. Um, and uh, I think it's unfortunate. Let's put it that way, because um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good that gets done in the roofing industry. And I think that, you know, part of that that image that contractors tend to have or that people have of contractors is negative connotation of a contractor's trying to screw me over. That connotation can end if we all just stop 
kind of bashing each other and try to build our own house up instead of trying to tear somebody else's house down. I totally agree. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Hippo Roofing, though. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about some other companies and stuff. Um, you guys have one of the most beautiful offices that I've ever seen in the state of Florida. Um, you guys do a great job. Where do you service? Where, what, what can people do? I mean, are you up and down the East Coast all over Florida? Where, what, is, what does Hippo Roofing cover? So we cover Brevard County, 70 uh, miles of uh, Florida on the Space Coast. Uh, right now, uh, we are just sort of servicing Brevard County. There's plenty of business here. Um, we might venture up north to Volusia, maybe over to Orlando, um, but the sky's the limit for Hippo, so we'd like to see little Hippo locations. Uh, it is a marketable uh, little logo guy. It is great. And, um, and we have a you know, beautiful system uh, down. Uh, everyone works together as a great team. So it's a, it's a whole assembly line that we have. And uh, just from the communication from the first um, interaction with the customer, even to the uh, last when we uh, close, it, uh, it is a friendly process. No, every company does have hiccups, but to avoid those hiccups with uh, customers, it all goes to that first visit. And um, I, I, I was listening to your other um, interview with the other company. And uh, when he mentioned about, uh, you know, um, keeping people interactive with their with their project and, and keeping them informed. It's all about communication. They mm -hmm. keep, um, usually, uh, historically, uh, roofing companies will come, see you, and then leave and go away. It's just, um, it's almost like I, I treat real, uh, roofing like real estate. It's a, it's, a real, it's a real estate career without spending $3,000 to get a license and all the qualifications as a realtor. So you're, you're ahead of the game. So what, what about growth then? Um, you, you know, you talk about the relationship. What helps a roofing company grow um, like a hippo roofing? Is it the marketing? Is it the people? Is it the reputation? What, what, is allow, what allows a roofing company to expand why others can't make it? What, what, I mean, I know the process, but what about the company itself? Is it the people? What's the most important thing if somebody wants to expand their company and, and to do what hippo has done? I speak on behalf of the, um, the marketing side. So since I'm not the owner and what how I'm involved in operations, it sure. all goes down to our uh, daily communication, not weekly. Um, on a daily, we communicate every single day with what's going on. So that's been from the ground when I first started with Hippo into today, every single day, all management, all staff is, are communicating every day with what's going on. So there's, everyone knows where everyone is. It's great. So now I'm going to ask, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, Aggie, mm -hmm. because you've been in this industry for a while. There's a lot of things that you have seen. Do you have one, oh, one story in mind that, that just sticks out to you? A funny story with a homeowner, something that demonstrates just the craziness of roofing all the way around, just anything at all that sticks out, or even not if it's one of you, maybe it's somebody else at Hippo, a story about just roofing in general. I'd love to hear something from you. Well, um, there, there's always, you know, funny uh, stories, you know, bad stories, but I like um, the the the, um, the fun stories that uh, really made an impact. So uh, we um, we had a customer that was just expecting, I mean, we have a, many of them, but the, the most important was, uh, you know, a little um, elderly lady that was uh, a low, low income. She only could afford a, um, a repair. And lo and behold, we, you know, we get there, go just do the repair. She has storm damage. We qualified for, for, for a re-roof. The same money that she would have spent on repair was for her deductible. And awesome. she got a new roof. I mean, it was there, there was more to that repair than she even knew. So uh, her family was ecstatic because now they she was secure in her home. Um, it's it, it's just one of those stories that really, you know, it, it touches us. And But it also lets us know that we got the family involved. It wasn't just the little elderly lady by herself. I mean, we had the family get involved. So we explained the process. And uh, what their options were and it and uh, they just didn't know it became thank you so much it's a blessing this is such a great lesson for roofing contractors because hippo roofing could have gone out there they could have taken the woman's money they could have done their repair and they could have moved on instead you went out there you advised the individual you looked at the policy found a way to get them the replacement that they needed and you did it for the same price that they would have paid for the repair but also, let me interject. Uh, we have the uh, building codes, Florida building codes. So it's not just we, you know, um, it's arbitrarily. These are building codes that we're following that are to the advantage of the homeowner. Mm -hmm. 
But and you know as well as I do, though, and that's where I think that, you know, it's just crazy that there are roofers who go out there and they will take that individual's money, the $2,000, they'll throw <clears throat> little shingles on there, and they'll say, well, I did what I could. I stopped the leak. They didn't get up there. They didn't inspect the roof. They didn't walk the roof. They didn't look at what was underneath. Now, I have seen you on the weekends on top of roofs in 100-degree weather. Is yeah. that? I mean, is that the normal over at Hippo Roofing? Because... If yeah. so, that's what separates you guys, right? So I'm not as as glamorous as I, as I am now. So when, when I'm on the roof, hair's up in a bun, okay. um, pretty much uh, very minimal makeup. And, you know, I, I'm up there, hat on. I sometimes could be on my hands and knees looking for, you know, things, just inspecting this roof, walking it. I just, I, um, I don't want to leave any decking unturned, no corner unturned. So I walk the whole roof. And um, it, it, even if there's no damage, I just want to be sure the whole deck is walked and it's checked off they get a, a roof inspection for their records pictures um i leave on a you know good note if there's storm damage there's viable storm damage there's a certain uh storm that came in the area and uh, we go from there with a claim if the customer you know wants to move forward and when you're opening up the claim with the customer are you guys just leaving them there like okay hey listen just here open up a claim and we'll talk to you later um or are you guys helping them through the process what is it like for Correct. hippo roofing? When so, you go um, we, we do help through the process now. It's um, we, we cannot make them do it. So um, mm -hmm. we have a wonderful publication that we offer. And with the publication that we offer, it gives them a step by step because we have we have a few customers that want us to be there. We are there present when they call in or they prefer to do it on their own. It is a step by step instructions on how they can file their claim to the T. Um, and then they can call us back and, and work that way. Um, if there's a, um, a mortgage involved, we let them know that we're going to be communicating between them, the insurance company and the mortgage company. Um, AOB has been abolished. So uh, there is a, a new way of doing business that will hopefully get everybody on a good ethical way of doing business, whether that be the contractor, the insurance company and the homeowner. So roofing contractors, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you are struggling right now, you better know these are the kind of people that you're competing against. People like Aggie who get up on a roof in 100 degree weather in the middle of summertime. Those are the people that are walking the roof. They're not just taking a quick buck. They're going ahead and they're advising customers. They're walking them through the process with the mortgage company. They're helping them open the, they're helping them with the claim. These are the kind of people that make a difference in the roofing industry. So if you're struggling out there, you're in the Midwest right now, you're wherever you're watching this, you're wondering, why am I not selling roofs? Well, you better be doing what these people are doing because they're not doing the bare minimum for their clients. They're going above and beyond for their clients on the weekends, seven days a week to get things done for them. And that's the hippo roofing difference, in my opinion. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but that's just what I hear when I listen yeah. to your passion for it, Aggie. I mean, I think you've seen all the content we put out. Um, I, I probably yeah. should be doing I think I should. I know I should be doing more, but I do weekly content um, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, we are constantly just adding value with uh, tips, pro tips, you, you know, um, did you know now um, civilizations starting to come open next year? We have a, our first home show in January. Right. I, I love home shows because consumers come to a home show to learn about contractors and home improvement. And it's a way for us to even uh, touch the materials and touch the build. And so I'm looking forward to that. We still will be complying with uh, mass moving forward, but I think human beings are social. And they just they just want to know. And I understand we're in a uh, what's in it for me society. But um, whether they mean that genuinely or whatever the case, I would people want to know, you know, if you're coming to help them door knock or if you even if you were solicited by them, how are you going to help them? They just want to know, how are you going to help them? That's a pretty simple question that I think a lot of people tend to neglect is that as a roofing contractor, you're there to help somebody with a problem that they have. It's not overcomplicating it. Hey, man, you know what? You probably have never opened up an insurance claim before. And if you have, you probably don't know a damn thing about it. You don't remember anything. And so you need somebody who's going to be there as an expert in the industry, somebody to hold your hand through the process. You guys are able to do that because you have the resources to make that happen. Is that correct? Correct. And so speaking about the other um person that was on i think sure. if people actually uh, read their policies or maybe had someone got to sit down with their um insurance adjuster or uh, insurance uh, writer that wrote up the policy to understand what they're responsible for i have a lot of homeowners that were um never told that they should maintenance their home that they should 
uh, and make their insurance company aware if there are any leaks. I've seen these leaks just kind of go really bad. And for any homeowners listening, if you see anything out of the ordinary, it's actually less expensive, even whether you have insurance or not, to uh, nip a little uh, leak sooner than later because the, the, the sooner you get it, the, the quicker we could repair it. Um, but if you just let it fester, that's where it can complicate things, make interior damage on the, even the roof just, just worse. So it's just like car maintenance, the uh, roof requires it. How and then, you know, when you have a homeowner that calls, you bring up a good point. They can sometimes be a little hesitant when they when working with a roofing contractor. I, how do you get that customer to trust you and Hippo Roofing? What is it about you and Hippo that, that makes them buy in so much? Sure. So, uh, th correct. They, they are shopping estimates and we are uh, told by the insurance company one thing, but when we tell the uh, cus consumer that they, they sh really should be uh, shopping uh, contractor and here's why. So, um, you know, when I, when I kind of use analogies of, you know, shopping for uh, cars versus shopping for roofing and kind of give them uh, analogies to help them with their process, it, 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 it kind of makes things more simple. And especially whether it be my first goal is to um, if I if we get on the appointment, it's to uh, build rapport. So what's the most a lot of customers are automatically looking for a number in their head. Um, when it's an insurance uh, claim, it's uh, I, I can't throw a number yet because you know we're, we're involved with Exactimate. That whole mess is a, a different thing. Um, but um, what, what makes it so easy is your deductible. Your deductible is how much you're going to be paying for your roof. If for whatever reason you are denied your claim, you have a second try. There's one more shot that you can do. On the second shot, um, this is where you know you guys can come in and, um, and and take it on from there. Usually, people go to legal on that aspect. Um, now legal uh, could take a couple of months. It could take two or three, uh, one or two years. We all know. So building that rapport is just, you know, is huge. But at the end of the day, it's uh, um, up to the uh, co the consumer and you know what they're looking, what their goals are too. Usually, I have um, you know the customer that's going to keep that home for for a long time will make the effort. Sometimes customers that are looking to sell their home and they don't know the longevity of the, the their stay there. Maybe there's no uh, commitment, but most people, when they listen, they realize that they have some great options. If you're going to go to legal, it is so essential that you set the right expectation. Mm -hmm. um, I see this mistake that roofing contractors make, and I know you guys do a great job over at Hippo. It's not going to be an overnight success to try to turn a denial into an approval. It's going to take time. Where customers get frustrated is when we don't set the right expectation with them when they think it's gonna be a one or two month process and it takes nine months or a year, yeah. we're gonna get it done. We can turn that we can turn that denial into an approval, but it's gonna take time and setting that right expectation is key for customer service. I right. agree. So tell me about this though. I mean, I wanna know a little bit more about you, Aggie, about, you know, you are all over the place, including, I will say this, I've seen you guys do some shows at malls before in the past, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, we've did uh, hurricane expos. We've done done, um, be, um, just, um, uh, um, I guess, open houses. I mean, if, if there's a gathering, um, I sign up for it. That's just awesome. And, <laughs> how, and how many, how many other roofers are there alongside of you at these gatherings doing what you're doing? Um, the diehards. I mean, I, I see some of my 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 uh, inner circle there. One or one or two. Um, but it's it's really just like the locals because the out of towners we all know that they're not going to make the investments there. Um, so it's the, it's the locals that are there that you know will make a presence. And see, that's where I think local contractors are making a big mistake. Not not in Florida, but I'm talking all across the U.S. And I, I know that you have local contractors that contact you for advice, for mentorship, for um, for leadership, even at times because of your experience in the industry. Yeah. But they're not doing those little things like that. They're not going to the trade shows. They're not getting involved with, um, you know, going to the mall or going to the home and garden show in your, in your city or your town. Yeah. These things make a difference in how you build your brand, which is something that you have excelled at. Can you talk about what goes through your head in building the Hippo brand and the Aggie brand um, when you do these things? I just look, I go to make a friend. Um, my intent is never to sell. My because here's the thing, uh, friends buy from friends. Once I have somebody that's 
made a good rapport with me and they have my phone number or, or even I have theirs, you'd be surprised how people call me back a month, two months, a year, or six months later. I mean, uh, the, I can not, never change my phone number because people who are calling me back uh, a year later after a home show, you know, they're ready. Uh, they, they saw me on Facebook or they, they remembered our conversation. So uh, those little things help build your pipeline. So it's, it's these little things that maybe are two or three hours on a Saturday, maybe five, I don't know, but um, who cares? It's, um, it's, a, it's a couple hour investment for it. Um, a whole year of impact. First, somebody has to like you, then they can trust you, and then they can buy from you. That's that's it. I mean, so if somebody doesn't like you first, if you don't get out there and meet somebody and shake their hand, they're never gonna. You're never gonna get their number, and when they need a roof, they're never gonna call you. You've got to get out there and take action, and that's what I think you've done. And so I think so many contractors should take heed to is that there are shows going on all the time. There are ways to get involved with your community. There's your, you know, your local B and B. I mean, whatever it be B and B, whatever it might be, you can go out there and get involved in your community at a greater level than what you're doing right now to help your company be successful. Um, I just, I just see too many contractors saying that they're struggling, they're not getting enough business, and then you know what they do, Aggie? They turn to one of those twelve-year-olds on Instagram, going, "I'm going to give you the ten best <laughs> today." Um, yeah. I, and so I'm going to say this because you've been in the, what do you think about, what is all that about? I mean, what is all this, you know, all this marketing, all these people who tell you they're going to get you 10 homeowner leads. That's yeah. not about real, is it? I mean, this is all just a bunch of fabricated BS, That's right? What? At least because those guys are the ones that went to door knock and they're selling you the leads. <laughs> yeah. And they're not just selling them to you. They're selling they're them selling to other contractors is what they're doing. I cannot stand it when I log on to Instagram or I log on to Facebook right now and I have some other kid telling me that he's going to, for $3,000 a month, I'm going to give you 10 roofing leads that you're going to be able to close. If you're a contractor, please don't fall for that crap. You know, listen to someone like Aggie, Hippo Roofing, put in the damn lead work, get out there in your community and get to meet the people in your community. Get on top of a roof on a Saturday and walk it and build the relationship. Get to know the neighbors. If you're taking the damn easy way out, going with some kid on Instagram for 3000 bucks who's going to give you 10 leads or whatever else they're going to promise you, you are playing a fool's game because you're going to go out of business. You're not going to be a hippo roofing. You're not going to last in a community, especially if you want to be somebody who they trust. I mean, Hippo Roofing's won multiple awards when it comes to magazines and local publications over in Brevard County. They do it because they're there in the community and they give a shit. They're not just flying through there chasing a storm. So you got to take accountability as roofing contractors for what kind of business you are putting out there. What kind of individuals do you have working for you? And so with that in mind, I want to talk about the people at Hippo, Aggie. I mean, from the top down, can you talk about the experience, the kind of individuals that you have? Um, what kind, what would someone, what should someone expect when they're working with the people at Hippo Roofing? Sure. They're, they're going to be working with a family. Everyone here is a father, a mother, a brother, a sister. They're veterans. We're a, a veteran owned company. Um, everyone's very personable here. We're also a, a multicultural family here. Everyone's from somewhere else. So, and uh, I'm different ethnicities too. So we're a, you know, a multi-pot here. So we're, we're a, um, we're a, a small but mighty family, you know, it's a, but we, uh, everyone, uh, you know, brings something to the table. No one has the mentality of, oh, that's not my job. You know, um, even for me, I mean, we had to scale a little bit uh, when, when uh, COVID happened, you know, I had to be a receptionist for a while, or I had to go and um, uh, do some roofing myself. I mean, you know, we had to get our hands dirty, you know, how has COVID changed the, changed the roofing game in your opinion? Maybe just your opinion, but also for Hippo. Give me an idea of what you think, how COVID has affected the roofing industry. Be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for anything because uh, um, also never be comfortable. And what about, so you got a lot of guys out there that are still door knocking. All right. Maybe they've made, and then it's tough. Door knocking is tough sometimes with the COVID stuff. People don't want you to come Why in there. Why does it have to be tough? Door knocking is the uh, fundamental essentials of marketing. It's what um, do, um, any business owner that used to do from uh, selling insurance to selling even um, 
legal services. I mean, it's um, it's you know what you uh, did uh, with HIPAA as well. I mean, it's the old school fundamental way of uh, getting in front of people. And uh, if that doesn't you know put a little bit of you know skin in the game for you, I don't know what does. You know, because at the end of the day, uh, SEO is is digital door knocking. But you can digital door knock all day long, but um, consumers are not going to buy um, a product or a construction product. Um, online without having some kind of legal document um which has to be seen in person so tell me about the because even if you do digital door knock you, you get the person to give you a call you're still having to talk to that individual you're still having to sell them on you i don't care if you're knocking on the door cold knocking it or you're having you're taking the lead in from online so you're still having to sell yourself you're still going to sell your company it's not just like hey listen let me just do this all online and go throw a roof on there I think it's a common misconception when people think, well, I'm just going to focus all online. No, oh, no. you to focus also, also on yourself and your the, the people that you have at your company. Too. I still have to go out and see that house. I still have to uh, go out and inspect the job. I mean, it might, it might not even be a hippo job. By the time I get out there, there's certain things, um, certain thing, conditions that I that we can't do. I, it might not be our job. So I just have to make sure that I go out and inspect it. I know that people want to be quoted over the phone. I mean, I we include the four sheets of rotted wood, but... Everyone who tells me they don't have rotted wood usually jinx, jinx themselves because guess what? I got six or six to 10 sheets of rotted wood. <laughs> That's just going to totally change the price. So, so when you, when you talk them. about the expectation there that you set with the customer because the customer complaints with Hippo are few, few, few and far between. And there's yeah. got to be a reason for that. I think it's right. because you guys do such a great job in the beginning with setting the expectations. I'm going to tell you a dirty secret. Usually the customers that do the complaints and maybe some of the other guys have come across this too. Uh, usually other customers that have been um, uh, fully disclosed, but sometimes uh, making a point of just putting something out there is, is on there. Not saying that all reviews that are um, on Hippo or, or even any other company are legit, but usually what happens is um, with the, the first process, that's why the, the first appointment I always tell customers, it will at least be an hour to set expectations. This could happen, that could happen, gutter, soffits, uh, decking, rotting, uh, look at your eave here, this is off, there's um, a skylight, all these ailments that could happen. So if it's not, if you don't um, um, set these kind of expectations, then when the construction happens, it's a tear off, it's it's scary. And, and it, 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 no matter who um, has had on their roof done, it, it's, it's a, it will freak you out. It's, it's your, you know, a third of, like you said, a third of your house coming off. So um, if you don't set that person up and also distinguish, you know, between rotted wood and, and um, um, stained wood or um, maybe fire treated wood or even uh, termites, termites, one of like uh, one in a few homes could come have termite issues. Mm -hmm. um, that's in your terms of condition. But if there's termite issues, we got to stop production. You got to get a termite um, ins um, inspector in there and get that all fixed up. And then that uh, termite wood is going to have to be replaced. So. These things can happen and uh, we don't know until we uh, pull off the roof. When you guys go out there with Hippo Roofing, tell me a little bit about how you, you put the customers, you know, you do personally, what do you do to put the customer's mind at ease? Because I kind of feel like I've been out there on, the, I mean, I used to sell roofs and I'd go out there and I kind of feel like people are a little bit, you know, they, they, they're feeling like they're, they're somebody's going to try to get one mm -hmm. over on them. They've got their defense up a little bit. What can we, what can we do as, as a general, as an industry, to, to yeah. let that guard down and help the customer. Tell me what, what you guys do and what you specifically do to help let that guard down. Show them that, hey, I'm a person you should be working with and trust. Sure. So I always, always ask the customer, where did that guard come from? Where did that mis where did that idea that we're trying to go up one of you um, happen? Did you have a bad, next bad experience before? I'd like to know, let's put uh, those bad experiences that you've had in the past or maybe heard on the table first so we can at least set that expectation and go over that. I usually like to ask the objections first, so that way I explain everything of what could happen and something that they possibly could have missed. So I put everything on the table. And that's from setting that expectation of this is gonna take an hour. We're gonna talk about this stuff. We're yeah. gonna talk about your roof. We're gonna go on your roof. Well, I'm, and I'm assuming now you guys even look interior on the inside of the roof, is that yeah. correct? Uh, always an, uh, an attic inspection is done. Now, uh, I recently had a, um, a a home that was done by one of my favorite cigar friends, and he had an addition put on, and I always do an attic inspection, but the attic, um, I did not see uh, 
water piping that because the water piping was in between the wall and a sub wall. So I still cannot see through walls yet. <laughs> but um, when we went to nail the deck to code, uh, we ended up hitting a pipe, which we missed anyways. And it was a, it, it could have been a catastrophe, but uh, at least, you know, it was an addition. Um, he knew the person that uh, made the home before pulled some, did not pull some permits to make that happen. Uh, luckily the, um, he uh, filed a claim for, um, the um, collateral damage um, because it was just one of those, you know, crazy things that happened that was not part of the, supposed to be part of the roof because it was not done to code. So it was an experience that if we haven't brought up and why we do attic inspections, um, it would have been a, a catastrophe. This is what I'm sick and tired of seeing in the roofing industry. There's one thing I'm tired of seeing companies and sales reps do. It's to go out there, they do a quick walk around the house. They go, yeah, we can go in and open up an insurance claim for you. And they, the homeowner goes, uh, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, don't worry. We do this all the time. Just call them and say, you know, it's going to be this date for a date of loss and let's open it up. <laughs> They're done. They open up an insurance claim and say, hey, an adjuster will be out here. I'll see you later. Uh, just call me when the adjuster's coming out. Those people need to go away. We, I mean, the, the less of those kind of contractor there is in the world, the better. But unfortunately, you see too much of that. You don't see people that are getting up there and seeing the inside of the roof, getting up there and truly seeing what the damage is. You don't see them really ex giving the right expectation for the homeowner. Because when you do that stuff, you, you avoid all those problems on the back end because you've set the right expectation. They know what's coming. That That's vitally important in the process of a roof. It's The roof is only part of the process. It's the homeowner experience that really makes a difference sometimes between one roofing contractor and the other. I agree. Yeah. Can I give you guys a tip, girl, guys and girls, a tip when it comes to uh, networking and building your pipeline? Uh, besides doing the home shows and you know going and shaking hands, be personable and get a, or, um, a hobby or a bunch of hobbies. So um, I'm a girl that smokes cigars. I golf. I um, I'm a Second Amendment supporter, so I go on the range, and I, um, I I'm into fitness. So between all those four hobbies, I make a lot of friends that think of me when it comes to roofs. Now, I think there's a lot of sales reps out there because this is such great advice. They just turn it off at, at five o'clock or seven o'clock whenever they're done with, you know, they're, they're being a being a contractor. Then I'm going to go to the gym Then I'm going to go to the range Then I'm going to go smoke some cigars. How are what are you doing during that time to help benefit your business? Because like you said, there's a lot of people at the gym who need a new roof. There's a lot of people smoking cigars who you can work with. That, in my opinion, can land you a great commercial deal, more residential referrals, and people aren't taking advantage of that because they're just turning it all off at seven o'clock, thinking that, uh, well, I'm done with my roofing job now. Well, for sure, because then the godmother of roofing, which is me, my little sub niche, uh, will take over. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is who is the godmother of roofing? Is that you now? Is that your name now, or is there somebody? Who, is that your trademark name? What's going well, on? I should trademark it, but I got that from um, my friend Tony Peck, and he's the godfather of Instagram. And um, we we have a, 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 um, a relationship of smoking cigars and. You know, and it, and um, he was mentioning that I should have a niche, and I'm I'm really you know doing well with roofing, and you know he likes cigar, I like cigars, and you know he he was the godfather of uh, Instagram, but I'm like gosh, you know, I, and then I'm uh, I'm from Boston, so um, we are big into and I, I'm big into uh, gangster movies, so uh -huh. um, my my little niche was the Godfather, so it was just um, it all came together, Godmother of roofing. So tell me this, how do you, let's, let's look a little backstory on Aggie. I mean, how do you go from Boston to Florida and more importantly, more, you're in Brevard. So how does the story end up from you at uh, to HIPAA roofing? Oh, Patrick, it's a long story, but long story short, I was a uh, personal trainer that had my own studio making $10,000 a month. And I thought I was going to retire by your age. And then uh, 2009, um, or I'm sorry, 2007's crash happened. And I went from making $10,000 a month to six to barely keeping the studio open. And then um, long story short, I um, did classes and kept it open for another two years, training the New England Patriots wives. That didn't work out for long because they got mostly traded out. And then I wanted to start all over again in Florida and I packed my shit and moved to Florida and just started afresh. But I knew the only thing that was going to get me back on my feet was sales. And um, I, I had a, a long time to get back on my feet financially. So I got kicked in the 
asked a couple times in life and um and i've gone through a couple careers to get into roofing but um that's another show another story but i'm here I'm more humble i do have mass hole tendencies and i know I've, you've come across that on instagram when we first connected so i applaud you for being my friend now so but here's here's the thing Aggie. for all those people of roofing contractors they see your success right now they see you on instagram i see the godmother of roofing i see the hashtags I see you out there and you're, you're hitting roofs and you're, you guys are making it happen. But it always hasn't been that way. Like you said, you've had to pick yourself up and and yeah. get to where you guys are now. And I say you guys because I'm saying you and Hippo. You've, yeah. You guys have both you know, really done such a great job, you as personally and as a company. So tell me, there's a lot of roofing contractors who are struggling right now. They're down on themselves. Maybe it's because of COVID. Maybe they've made some bad business decisions. Maybe they have a bad reputation. Can you give that person, can you speak to that individual? What maybe some advice about how can they get back to where they want to be? What steps to what's that first step they need to take to get back um, to success, to get back to where they want to they want to take their company? Get everybody that's in that company in one room and put the whole process in writing. If uh, um, usually what happens is people don't have it in writing and they assume their jobs. And, and then when you actually realize who you think is doing certain jobs and they're not being done. So until you have that whole process in writing and everyone has their their um, commitments and their jobs in writing and they, they stick to it, it's just going to be you're winging it to nowhere. Do you guys have a CRM there at HIPPO? I'm yep. assuming you guys have something like that, right? Yep, Aculinks. So that's, that's why I'm glad you mentioned that because this week alone, I've been to three roofing contractors who did not have a CRM other than QuickBooks. And now I understand you're, you're trying to scale your business. And Aggie just said it right there. If you're having trouble, look at how you're organizing your information. AccuLinks is a great, it's a great tool. In my opinion, it's the best tool if you want to know the truth for when it comes to a CRM. But, you know, I see too many roofing contractors making the mistake, like you just said, Aggie, of they... They're trying to put on a great roof. They're trying to deal with production, pay their sales reps, deal with a whole process of insurance, and they don't even have a CRM to make it happen. How are you going to replicate success when you have no clue who the heck is putting, who the heck is doing what in your company? And that that is that's not a one-off thing. That's a real that's happening everywhere right now in roofing, and that's a sad thing because it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to be that way. Right sure. now, I mean, we always start small. I mean, I, I know uh, we're one of the first uh, AccuLink's children. We're one of their first customers, but um, it, it, it's taken years for them to perfect their um, th their CRM system. But gosh, there's there there are many tools that you can start with for free. I don't know or small, um, but whether it, the, the the intent to be in business is genuine, or maybe you're just you don't you're not spending the money because you're not going to be in business long. I don't know. It's all up to the the person. Stuff. What about what about the 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 online presence for roofing contractors right now? Some would say it's more important than ever for roofing contractors to be present on things like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. I've even heard things like TikTok or Parlor. These are places where um, traditionally roofing contractors have not been. Do you think it's important to have a presence on these places? And if so, what 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 first steps can somebody make to they're not going to be the godfather or godmother of roofing. They're not going to be that place overnight. But what's the first step they can take if it is important to get involved there? Facebook is free. Instagram is free. You can always leverage those those two major major things. Um, at the end of the day, people are social media um, bumpkins, and they're they're on social media. They're we just uh, socially want to check who, uh, who people are. I mean, what's the first thing we do when somebody messages us? We look at their profile. I mean. Uh, it's, um, we Google or we, we we search people. We want to make sure they're legit. You know, it's just a, 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 I just say, you know, start with um, free stuff and, you know, uh, progress from there. Huge mistake I see people making. You Tell me if you agree with me, Aggie. I mean, I can go right now to Hippo Roofing on Instagram and I can find Hippo Roofing if I put it on Instagram right now. Yep. I would say that's not the norm. Would you agree? I mean, I, I see a lot of roofing contractors that don't even have a page on Instagram. I mean, even if they don't, I mean, Instagram is um, not one of the, the uh, it is one of the strongest, but, you know, Facebook you, now is number one, but Parler is, you know, uh, making a big headlines. There's a big sure. shift in the, you know, community um, going to Parler. So it would be advantageous to 
give it a hey. What, what, what's a few minutes a day of getting a profile? And I think that's the biggest thing is that, guys, hippo roofing, if, if you're looking for one of the reasons besides Aggie and the great process and the, the great roof they put on, they do have a presence online, not just with their website, but go to their Facebook. Check out Hippo Roofing. Check them out on Instagram. They're putting out content that people can verify. They're showing what kind of company they are day in, day out. Because if not, if you don't have that stuff and all you've got is a few average Google reviews and you're trying to build your reputation, then you got, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You've got to go ahead and build your reputation through other means, through other mediums. It's got to happen through Instagram and LinkedIn, post articles, show yourself to be an expert in the industry like Aggie and the Hippo team have done. Because of that, I mean, you, you won't find somebody, I mean, if you want to talk about reputation, you can go to any number of mediums and find out everything you want to know about Hippo. I mean, it's not just a website and a Facebook page. You guys are all over the place. Yeah. Billboards too, uh, TV. I'm on TV. I'm on yeah. Billboard, yeah, but... <laughs> uh, so the, how do you how do you make that decision in marketing? You are you are what's called a marketing guru, I would say, of, uh, of of roofing. So how do you how does a roofing contractor make that decision and where they put their marketing money? What advice would you give them? Um, the the company does uh, strategically um, plan their marketing uh, foots in certain areas uh, to give it a try, and where they are more successful, they'll they'll put a little bit more. So we we will try a little bit of everything. But if there's no uh, turnaround or some kind of return on investment in a certain amount of time, it's just not going to work. I mean, you know how many magazine companies or uh, how many, you know, um, radio stations, um, you know, blow me up on a weekly basis to be uh, marketing with them? I mean, sh shoot. <laughs> a lot. I would say every single one of them over every there. Every single one of them, you know? Yeah. I mean, because you guys are so high profile. You, you drive yeah, past yeah. the building. Everybody knows where it is. Yeah, I know. So. So I want to I want to kind of close with this then, Aggie. I mean, I want to see what your advice is to a homeowner who's considering putting they've got they've got some damage to their roof. Um, what advice would you give to that individual? Who should they call? What should the process look like for them? If they're a homeowner watching this, what should they do, Aggie? Make sure that they get the uh, cell phone of the uh, the roofing consultant that they uh, hire. It's uh, it's it's important to have that personal relationship. They need to be able to. Um, call that uh, roofing consultant and uh, they need that that roofing consultant needs to be available for their questions. If they have any feelings of disconnect, uh, that roofing consultant uh, not um, communicating, um, they do have three days to rescind. But at the same time, it's um, if you if you don't touch um, in with your customer on a weekly basis, because sometimes two or three months out might seem forever for some customers or might be just you know, time, but some customers want to have, you know, they're, they're, they've given you possibly either a deductible or maybe even like half of the uh, roof proceeds. And without having that communication, it will freak them out that they don't hear from you. So just be present, um, be available. I think it's so key. Be available to somebody because they, yeah. a lot of these people, it's, it's, it's new to them. You've got to understand that it's not a, it's not a, it's not a process they've done before. So if you just leave them out there high and dry, of course, they're not going to give you great reviews. Of course, the experience is not going to be great for them because they're not going to know what's going on. People want to be in the know. They don't want to be taking guesses. Um, with that in mind, um, what I want to do is this, is I just want to tell people, I, if you could just tell everyone where they can contact Hippo Roofing, the way they could contact you all if uh, they need a new roof or they want someone to come out there and take a look www.hipporoof.com. Our number is 321-951-2500. You can find us on uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, Hippo Roof. And I'm I, I'm Aggie Hall or the godmother of roofing. At Aggie Hall, please follow her. You will see what it really takes to be great in this industry. Not just a great roofing contractor, but a great person as well. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak Thank with you. Okay. Ask for some cigars. All right. Sounds good. Bye, everybody.